Well, hello, folks. Richard Reyes, Certified Financial Planner, Orlando's very own financial quarterback. And today, let's talk about required minimum distributions. As we're getting closer to the end of the year, uh, um, folks that are turning 70 or se close to 70 and a half get mail throughout the year that says, hey, this is your year to take out your money. Uh, and it, it's kind of a confusing uh, thing because people don't have a, a good understanding of when they take it out, should they take it out, how they take it out. So the, the first one is always the most confusing. But one of the things about required minimum distributions is that um, what often happens is that m most don't need this income. But however, they're forced to take this distribution from their IRAs and 401ks and 403bs and so on and so forth because basically the IRS in Washington says, hey, the free ride is over. You owe those taxes. And what happens is that people don't need this income, but what happens is that this income comes out and now forces them, forces most of them into uh, additional taxes, causes more additional taxes on their Social Security. And these taxes and income only gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's a, you know, it's kind of a snowball effect. Are there ways to mitigate that? Are there ways to erase your required minimum distributions or get, um, uh, or get by not taking your required minimum distributions? And the simple answer is no, there, there is not. You know, once you have money in IRAs and 401ks, you have to take them out. However, there are ways to sort of either decrease the uh, amount uh, of required minimum distributions and or play with that amount some so that you're not forced to take all of, the, all of that income out in the first year. However, these are things that we plan for. These are not things that you call me the year that you're required to take your distribution and say, hey, is there anything we can do? Okay. First and foremost, the first thing you can do or one that a lot of people actually don't do, but it's available. It's what's called a qualified charitable donation. And that is instead of you taking the income from your for, for required minimum distributions from your IRA, you can actually have that in, that income go directly to the charity or church that you are donating money to. Um, it's a often not used. Um, uh, a rule that it's available and it actually kind of was made permanent a couple of years ago, but that is an option. And the great option about that is that it, w once you do that, it's like the income doesn't even show up on your tax return. So there's a lot of positives to it, but not a lot of people use it. Uh, the second thing that you can do, and, and one that I've actually used a few times and it works pretty well, is what's called a qualified longevity annuity contract. That allows you to shelter um, up to $125,000 per IRA or per person uh, into this uh, into this annuity contract that basically allows you to defer uh, additionally your required minimum distribution until age 85 uh, for that portion of the money. So that actually works quite well, and I've used that because um, that's structured more as a, 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 an income stream that's going to start a lot later in life. And again, it allows you to defer again more of your required minimum distribution for another 15 years or so. Um, and one that, uh, one of my favorites that we work with a lot of our clients, with most of all our clients doing is Roth conversions. Of course, this is not something that you do the first, the year before you, uh, need your required minimum distributions. This is something that we do over time. And Roth conversions are great because what we are able to do is take portions of your traditional IRA over time and start converting them into Roth IRAs. Roth IRAs do not have any required minimum distribution. And all, also what it allows us to do is lower our required minimum distributions from our IRAs, therefore lowering our taxes, lowering the taxes of our Social Security and so on. So these are just three ways kind of around them. Uh, but either way, you have to understand that you need to work with a professional to do this. This is not a do-it-yourself project. I have met with folks that have tried it themselves, and it's very expensive because either you have to pay me a lot of money to fix the mess you created, or you have to pay the IRS because now you have additional taxes, penalties, and interest because, again, you made a mistake. So this is not a place to try it yourself. So with that being said, thanks for tuning in to Financial QB TV. Call me, email me if you have any questions.
and I'll t see you next time.